And this morning's message um, is really uh, all about uh, where we're placing our trust. And it has nothing to do with, um, it's, it's not, uh, I'm really, it's not about money. It's about mindset. It's not about, I'm going to say that again. It's not about the money. It's about mindset. It's about hearts. It's about trust. It's about clarity. Um, it's about uh, where we draw our help from and what we, de- we declare our strength to be. Yeah. And, um, and so we're going to jump right into the word this morning. We are still in the series called House in Order. House in order, and I really believe that was something the Lord was speaking at the end of last year, um, really in October, uh, that this house, to get some things in order in this house, that our houses would be in order. This is not uh, so much a marriage and family series, although we will be doing uh, one of those here coming up shortly uh, after Easter, just a little bit after Easter, but this is very much still a marriage and family series because anything that has to do with the Word of God affects my marriage and affects my family. I'll tell you, the most horrific moments in marriages and in families is when fear is gripping everybody. This is when fear is gripping you, that it doesn't marriage and family, it's tough. We don't need to talk about communication because we're not communicating. We're just screaming at one another. Like we're not that all that goes out the window because we're afraid. Fear, so if we can get a hold of this, if we can get a hold of some things. So anyway, all this house in order, really getting back down to the foundation. And, and really at the beginning of this year, man, I was like, Lord, this is like some heavy revy, right? This is some heavy stuff. This is some stuff that's like, you know, it, it, it's truth. But really what I felt like, it, the best way I could give you this picture is there, in, in Christianity and even in, in my life, in our lives, um, that it again, because I don't, I don't feed what I didn't taste, right, or eat already. Um, but there are some things that were built and some ways that have been um, allowed to come in to our, our ways of life that really aren't the Lord. And so in order to get this house in order, there was some demolition and some correction and almost a wrecking ball, so to speak, because God's word is a hammer. The Bible tells us that his word is a hammer. They lit my pants on fire. I felt like that. Anyway, the voice inflection. Um, anyway, if you don't know, you don't know. So uh, praise the Lord. But uh, I felt like it was a wrecking ball, so to speak, um, but very intentional. You know, when, when the Bible says that God's word is a hammer, hammers break things. Hammers um, make change. They can also destroy, but they can break shackles. Have you ever seen how they used to put shackles on a, on a prisoner or how they would take it off? And you'd have to actually... Put your hand there, and they'd take that sledgehammer to bust that off. They'd break the pin off. But I'm telling you, they could have missed, right? And so it's just it's like, Lord, I hope I'm not missing as we're swinging, you know. Um, but there was, this was real, a real, like, breaking back down and getting back to that slab or getting back to that rock. That, as Paul said, I, uh, um, I, I as a, ch- a wise master builder, have laid this stone in Christ. You know, it's easy sometimes to build a different way, but, he's, but he says there, right after that, he says, but you who build, be, be, be careful how you build. Don't build, uh, don't build this way. Like there, are, there, are, there is a plumb line, which is the word of God. And sometimes we just get um, away from the plumb line to where we go and we go, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. You know, I know I got uh, in the front row here, I got Mr. Deadeye, um, a.k.a. Philip Parker, uh, when, when it comes to uh, doing uh, construction or whatever, he goes, that ain't level. Or he'll be like, that's level. You know, and you're like, and you, no, that's not level. He's like, yeah, that's level. And you put that level up there, and it's level. It's like, God, dang, he, that's good. <laughs> like, he's told you, you know. But sometimes in our lives, it's like we see a shadow or we see something else, and we call that level or something looks off to us. And it's actually plumb, and it's actually true. And you need that level of the word, and go back to that to, to begin to and to continue to build. Because it's maybe not such so important if you're just down here, but if the Lord is going to take you somewhere, in other words, a layer upon layer from glory to glory, it matters uh, that you're that you're true down at the base. You know, a skyscraper, that which is seen, if your life, let me say it this way, if your life is going to be seen, if you're going to carry the glory of God, if you're going to have that, in a sense, the light on the, on the pole, not under a bushel, it matters 
It matters, the foundation, and it matters that you're in my life would be plumb. Or be in accordance to. See, that's all it means. Plumb just means in accordance to something greater. Level. Perpendicular, all right? And so we were getting back to that, and, 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 and last week we really come at, coming in talking about authority, all authority from God. I want to pick up kind of in that same vein. Ultimately, the authority of Scripture is what we're going to talk about this morning. But this morning's message, um, it, it, the title of it is, again, in, in House in Order, is Who Told You That? Who Told You That? Who Told You That? Have you ever heard that in a house? Who told you that? Like maybe someone said, you need to turn off Fortnite. Well, who told you that I had to? Well, mom and dad told me to tell you that. Have you ever had that experience? Have you ever had this experience? Maybe you're the one that said this. You're not the boss of me. (laughs) Anybody heard that? If you have a couple little kids in a room, and I don't know, I always hear this more with females than I do with boys, because boys are like, I just told you, wham, you know. But girls are like, you're not the boss of me. Um, I've, I've heard it. I've just, I, I've, I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord, for three boys. Because the grace that I received is for young boys, all right? Um, but you've heard that statement, like, you're not the boss of me. It, what they're saying is your word doesn't carry the weight. But if mom said that, or if dad said that, then we'll come into order, right? But if, if just you send a brother there to tell your sister you need to, what, you're not the boss of me. And I think that that's how a lot of times even the gospel is received. As we declare the word of God, and, 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 and as a pastor would declare the word, I'm going to take your Bible this morning. Um, I really wanted my King James Bible, or New King James this morning. But uh, we say, you're not the boss of me. Do I say that to this? No, I shouldn't. Sometimes I do, though. You know, like when somebody wrongs you intentionally, and you're supposed to love them? Oh, like, I can love until, like, now it's like rubber is hitting the road here. Really, I want to go slash their tires. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, I want to, I want to, this, this happened. Uh, there's a, I want to take a mattress in the middle of the winter and, and put it in front of their garage door in Minnesota and fill it with water so it freezes to your, gra- to your ground so you can't get out of your driveway. I want to, I want to, that's, that's. You're saying, what? Yeah, like a, a mattress, the only way to get it up is break it up with like a hatchet. And to, you, that's tough. I want to get some cement bags and dump them on your lawn. That wasn't me. No, that wasn't me, by the way. But this happened. When you have an, something where somebody cuts you, you think, how can I cut them back to the point of like, mm, I could, yeah, and it gets so, you ever been there? Have you ever thought about this? Uh, what, some, what would you do with somebody that cheated with your spouse before something like that happened? And you go, ah. It's scary, isn't it? It's scary so many times what's in us, and we're unaware. It's scary. But there is a plumb line. And there's a way that you and I are to respond, and it really is in accordance to this. And so there is a strength in this. Not just to say to hold a line, but also to do. There's a strength in this. If I'm willing to yield to this, to what it says. When it says forgive, if I'm willing, if I'm willing to make that choice, there's a grace that comes with that, with his word, always. And so this morning we're talking um, about uh, who told you, like in a house, who told you that, who told you that. And uh, I'm going to set this, uh, this, this, this message up uh, talking along chaos. There's, there's just cha- How many of you have noticed chaos lately? Anybody? Um, anybody have their phone not work recently? Okay, quite a few people. Um, anybody have power go out recently? Okay. Um, anybody seen something uh, recently about a solar eclipse? Anybody seen or heard something maybe about China? Anybody heard or seen something maybe about Russia? Anybody seen something maybe about the Pokemon? I don't know. I mean, anybody seen something about UFOs? Anybody seen something about... Okay, there's a hundred things I could pull up in, and throw out there, and, and none of them are surprising. Anybody seen somebody jump off the dock right into the water and there was a great white shark there, almost ate them? Anybody see that? Like, there's a lot of things that we're seeing and hearing right now, and all it's adding to is like this audio, uh, 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 this noise, and so we're, we're, we're like trying to hear the Lord 
and, but yet we can't hear the Lord because there's this audio. It's like this, this background noise that you, you, you hear. And so we're going to teach the word. We're going to read the word. But something's playing in the background. It's like, kind of like this, uh, where you hit play on that video. This is what it sounds like as we're trying to hear what God is saying. And we're supposed to be led by the Spirit of God. And there's some really important things for us to hear right now and some choices to make. And you know what we need to hear? We need to hear God's voice above all the others. But the problem is there's other voices that are so loud that we're missing words. And so I sit here for hours and I contemplate my day and I try to figure out what God is saying and how he's leading me. Should I move here? Should I do this? Should I take this job? Should I not take that job? What should we do? How are we going to make it? How am I going to be sustained? Is God going to provide for me? What if China invades? What if Russia invades? Maybe there's going to be a bomb. Maybe there's going to be an electric bomb. It's a pulse bomb. I need to get back to the 1970 vehicle so that I can, that I can run off of just ignition and spark and, and combustion and carburetor. I don't even know how to work a carburetor. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? I know we need to dig a well so we have fresh water and we need to figure out how to go back to canning goods. Oh my, no, no, we better not do that. We probably shouldn't send our kids to school because there might be somebody with a gun. And this is what it sounds like in my mind every day. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I should hold on to all of my dollars because that's going to, well, but wait, if I hold on to my, all my dollars, even if I hold on to all of them in a few years, inflation's going to make my dollar that was this much, just this much. I don't know what I should do. I don't know, but I am supposed to be the salt and the light in the world, but it's kind of crazy. I don't know how to even share the, my faith because I don't even know if I have faith. Do I even have faith? Does it sound like Christians? Did I kind of... That's what it sounds like? Preach Jesus! Unbelief. Chaos! 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 And see, here when there's chaos, here's what happens. The unauthorized are given access. When there's chaos, the unauthorized are given access. I remember listening to, um, we were at a, a, a Get It conference, and um, it was a conference, a church conference, and uh, up in Kalamazoo, Michigan, uh, Jeff and Beth Jones. Uh, and I remember her talking, um, we actually went back to visit them as we were going to be taking over this church as young, uh, young pastors. I was 26, 27 years old. And um, Went up there maybe a year after just trying to get some wisdom, some godly counsel outside of just mom and dad that just said, you know, uh, just help, help us, right? And one of the things that they said uh, in that time is um, when they had a church split was when they were building their building. Because there was so much going on, they were unaware of all the other things. And I, thought, I remember that. And I just, just so that, that thing just stuck with me. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And so they said, just, uh, they, they said, well, as you're building, because I was a, a builder by trade, but also like ambitious, you know. Um, and then from that time, while well, we're like, I'm pressing go and trying to get to the place of being out of business into full time ministry, um, that was when there was some stuff in the, going on that I didn't know about, right? Well, and so then I was, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking even about in this day and age, in society, in America, you're hearing all these things going on. Okay, and I, I want to, I'm going somewhere with this, so I want you to hear me. And this is not about a church, uh, a church split or uh, chaos where China's coming in or Russia's coming in. Okay, I want you to stick with me. But there's chaos. There's chaos. And right now there's chaos in our society everywhere. And so, there's, and so where there's chaos, there's division. There's division where there's chaos. There's not unity. Where there was like, united we stand. Like, you know, we used to sing this song. Like, we had a national anthem. We had a pledge of allegiance. We had uh, a salute for our military where we trusted military and those that were giving orders and so on and so forth. But instead, there's, now there's, there's chaos. One person saying this, one person saying this, one person saying this. And so there's the, the unity and the disunity, it, it, what it's happening is right now, or the chaos and the noise, it, there's, there's a divide within that's actually our greatest enemy. And we don't realize it because of all the words. There's all kinds of words right now in this nation, and we're going to, in this nation right now, there's all kinds of words. Now, I want, I'm going to give you some scripture, and we're going to pull, pull a few things down, and I want you to see this, all right? Matthew chapter 8, 
This is the story of the centurion. I, too, am one under authority. Remember he said this? I receive orders. I, I, you receive received orders. We're talking about having great faith because amongst the chaos, we need to have some faith if we're going to walk in the victory that God designed us to walk in. Like, faith is still important, yes. believe it or not. Yes. Faith matters. Yes. What you believe matters, yes. not just what you don't believe. The yeah. matter of fact, there's so much of what I've heard is uh, a question this, question everything, uh, deconstruct this. How about reconstruct? How about st- uh, fortify the truth of God's word? Uh, how, about what it, how about going back to believe instead of my experience? Another thing that I see, another thing that I heard, another thing, and letting that be what now directs my life instead of what this says. Okay, this is, these things are, there used to be a time when we believed a lot simpler, kind of like, almost like a child. There used to be a time where we believed a lot simpler, almost like a child. But now, as the Bible told us it would happen, knowledge has increased. So it's kind of like we're going to read a scripture here, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. It tells us, tells us this in Timothy, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. How do you know when you found truth? Well, freedom would be a pretty good... You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So the more you know and the more you learn, tell me how free, much more free you get. Because you're ever learning, we're ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth or that which would bring freedom or peace of mind. Instead, it's just a little bit more noisy, a little bit more crazy, a little bit more constricted, a little bit more like hide the kids, hide the wife. And we're ever learning. We're not coming to the knowledge of the truth. Now, uh, uh, again, Matthew chapter 8, 9 through 11, it says, For I myself am under authority with soldiers under me. That means I'm over people. Okay? I tell this one to go, and he goes, and that one to come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. Next verse. Well, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to, the following, uh, to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Next verse, last verse. I say unto you that many will come from the east and west and will take their place to the feast of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the kingdom of heaven. Okay, I guess that wasn't part of really it, what I was trying to make the point. Um, bottom line is this, what I'm trying to communicate is, this morning is authority matters. Authority in the kingdom and authority here on earth. Now, we know that the Bible says all authority is from God. Did you know that the Bible says that multiple times? Okay. So, <clears throat> order requires others. We're talking about house and order. Order requires others. It does. It requires others. And um, sometimes it's mom and dad and then son and daughter and so on and so forth. Sometimes it's principal, teacher, right, student, uh, board. Right? There's order. Order requires others. And again, according to Romans, according to the word, the authority is from God. God the Bible tells us in, in Psalm 75, 7, it says that God is the one who raises up, and he's also the one that removes. Let me ask you this. Is, it, is, is, um, is uh, corruption in a, in a certain party or uh, the other party too hard for the Lord? Hmm? Because the way I hear... And what I see, it surely sure sounds like it, especially from a lot of the Christian believers that are just another voice, but not a voice to hear, not a voice like this, but just a voice like this. And what's happening is just adding to the chaos. Who told you? You've got to ask yourself this question. Who told you? Who told you that there was this? Who told you that there, this was? Who told you? And what happens is a lot of the things we hear lead, lead you and me to inactivity. Well, we're going to look at this here in a moment. Because the more you keep hearing, the less you are doing anything because you don't know what to do. Okay? Well, how are we going to defeat the government? Well, you're not. You're not. Can I tell you that? You're not. You're not supposed to. You're actually so supposed to submit to those in governing authority. Oh, Lord, not, not I. No. I only obey one person, and that's the Lord. But nobody knows what he's told me to do, so. But let's keep on remembering this. Order requires others. We don't only, we don't only work with God. We work with men. God puts you here 
but God also put them here. We forget this sometimes. We forget the them in the story that is also from the Lord. So God put them here. How many people do you think are in government that are born again believers? Anybody? Anybody give a, I mean, do you think that there's more than one person in Washington, D.C. that, that is, have surrendered their life to Jesus? Do you think so? So by, by you and me talking about how bad government is, I'm, I'm cutting my own brother and sister? Whoa. So they're there, they're there in your place, taking a stand in your place. What you were hoping and wishing for, but to stop praying for, and said, now we're praying against. We're adding to the chaos with our mouths. We're adding to the chaos with our mouths. I'm telling you, this has happened. And, I'm, and this is not just about government. This is about everything in life. This is about in my house and having my house in order. When you and I are adding to the story or, or bringing things that isn't what God's told you and me to do. Again, who told you that? Who told you to, be, to entertain that? Who told you to be, be before that? Because what's happening is, as we're listening to these idle words, they're bringing inactivity. I can tell you what, what, when those kind of conversations are happening about the frustration of government and corruption, it, does it even matter if you vote? Does it, does it even matter? I mean, come on. Like, if we're probably going to have a hanging chat again. Or, or, or somebody's going to hijack the software. Or it's just corrupt and it's all ran by China anyway. Or I don't know what story you've gotten, but there's the story that's probably, in every one of those stories, caused you and I to recede our hand from doing. Is that right? Yeah. How many of you have honestly entertained the idea of, it might not be even worth voting. Go ahead. Raise your hand. Holy cow. Half, over half the church said it doesn't even matter to vote. Good, because God's word doesn't matter either. God's word doesn't matter. Because God's word said to pray for those in authority. Hmm. I mean, why even vote? Why even take a stand in this place? Why, even, why do anything for? Because he says, and here's how I can tell you that the church has not prayed for those in authority. Instead have, has opposed those in authority. You can see it all through the world right now. Authority is stood against. Police. There, whether it was a coup or not, to start a police brutality or not, or uh, what, no matter what, I, uh, no matter what, okay, and use this or this or this. Absolutely, there's race things involved. Absolutely, I'm not. But to, was it was it was it what was it for? It was to plant a seed, to defy authority. Because the reality is, what you've seen is, yeah, there's good cops or policemen, and there's bad policemen. There's good politicians and there's bad politicians. There's good and there's, there's good and there's bad. But the resistance is, is to defy authority. Defy authority. It kind of sounds a lot like this word that Jesus said. As, mm, I know what it is. A house divided. Oh, you know what we can do? Let's get an inside job. Let's get somebody to no longer listen to authority. Let's talk about, just, I'm talking in my house, all right? Let's, let's hear about, in this, in this community, let's hear about some coaches. Tell me about your, the coaches that you love and the ones that you don't like, about how, what they're doing right and what they're not doing right, about the plays that they're calling or the plays that they're not calling. Anybody here a coach? Do you feel this? Do you feel that? Do you, you, you do? Well, I thought we were on the same team because I'm coaching Johnny, but it sure sounds like we're not. And instead of me being at a focus, all I hear is, give him the dang ball. I'm like, Johnny, sit down. So Johnny's your, a great player. Yeah, but he's, he's causing a division, division in this. I can't even focus in this. And so even the assets that you have are, are on the sidelines. This is happening. And so here's what it says. It says, um... So we got to remember this, that, that there are people all over part of God's plan. And we can stand in opposition of them, or we can do what the Lord said um, in, in, in 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. And it says this, first of all, then, I urge you that petitions and prayers, and you maybe have heard this, so I want you to stick with me, because we're going to go through verse 4 here, not just 1 and 2. 
I urge you, first of all, that petitions, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgiving be made, thanksgiving for the government, and thanksgiving. And no, nobody complains when they get their tax return. <laughs> or when, when they are driving on the interstate and the road is paved, and, or that there's road work that got finished. Nobody's complaining. Let it be made for all people, next verse, especially those for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. I want to just define that, that tranquil or that peaceful and quiet. Those two words there, tranquil or peaceful right there, peaceful meaning this, free from outward disturbance. Tranquil, without needless, okay, this again, that first word still, free from outward disturbance, without needless commotion or disturbances. Are there some needless commotions and disturbances right now? What's the key? What, what's the key? Somebody said it. Prayer. That's the key. Prayer. What's our prayer life look like? Oh, we talked about this last week by John. Remember that? Under an assignment, you, how many were here? Wow, that was good, wasn't it? Wasn't that timely? Yeah. Under an assignment, who, who are, are, are we still on assignment? Because we're here. As long as we're here, we're, we, there's an assignment. And the assignment is not just a natural one. And the, 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 even what you're seeing, it's not just natural means. It's not natural origin. In a sense, there's, there's suggestions that are coming to make this bill pass or this bill pass. There's also in, like a, a leading. There's a leading. Let's say it that way. There's a leading, and it's not just at this level. It's from above. The next, ver- the next one, it says quiet, that you might live a peaceful and quiet. The word quiet means this. Uh, d- Divine inspired inner calmness, uh, words that would stir up needless friction. So free from, excuse me, free from words that would stir up needless friction. Anybody have some words recently that stirred up some needless friction? God, like just some, there's a word. It's like, I didn't need that, but all of a sudden now I got that, and now I'm wondering about this. He said that when you and I pray, that there's a quietness, there's a peacefulness, a life that we're to live, when you're, the reason we're afraid of government is because we don't pray for government. Or if we do, we don't believe in the power of our prayers. That's just, that's, it just go, let's get back to the basics here. He said, this is, he says, for this is good. What's good? Praying for those in authority so that you could live a life free of quiet or free of the chaos so that you could hear God's voice the same way we're talking now instead of where it was just complete chaos earlier today. Wow. My prayers, are my prayers, you're my prayers, whether it's pastoring, parenting, teaching, coaching, governing, no matter what it is, my prayers turn down others' volume and allow me to hear from him. Are you wondering about your kids? Are you wondering about your business and what you're going to do and all this kind of crazy and what about this and what about this? Can I tell you? Pray about it. Can I tell you to pray for those in authority? Can I tell you to pray for those in authority? Can I just tell you to pray for those in authority? Because their decisions make matter to you. And, And what it does is it turns down the volume so that you and I can hear clearly. And we can live a godly and peaceful life. And then let's go to verse 4. Because this is really what it's about right here. God wants all people. Who? How many people does God want saved? And how many does he want to come to the knowledge of the truth? But you know, I'm a little distracted here and this over here. And I'm a little distracted here and that over here. And I'm a little distracted over here. And i got to find out if what I heard was true. So now I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes or 3 years trying to discover if I heard about, you know, the aliens. Is that true? Is that really a, like, area? Like, and, and everything you're hearing is just adding more to the chaos that has what we're, here, what we're seeing in the end times is this, and this is one of the signs of the end times, is that deception would be very prevalent. And let me, let me give you a Sandlot analogy. We have this video of this is how the stories that we're hearing today sound, okay? How many of you ever watched The Sandlot? Okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's a great movie because there is cussing and all that in it. But when I was a kid, this was like my thing. 
Like, I, just, I played with kids in the neighborhood. Uh, this was like, man, this is, brought me back to my childhood. And I could quote this movie. Like, I mean, I, it, it's terrible, but it's, it's in there. But there's this story you're about to see here. We're going to press play. It's about a two and a half minute story about the beast. This whole movie is based on a lie. The whole movie is based on a lie, and you're going to hear the story of one man telling a whole crew about a lie, okay? And everything they do is going to be, in this whole story, is based on this lie. And the one person that hadn't heard about the lie, but still is innocent of the lie, he said, nah, you don't get to see this on the video, okay? But this is exactly even how he sounds when he says that, okay? Nah, y'all are just making that stuff up to scare me. He goes, don't believe me? Stick your head out that window. Okay? And so he sticks his head. What I learned that day was when I looked down there, I saw that more than there was not a single solitary baseball down there. And I, he comes back. It's down there. He's what he says. He didn't see it. All he saw was whew, some smoke coming out of the doghouse from, from the ball, getting the dog, the paw grabbing the ball. And he's like, oh, it's down there. So now he's a believer of the beast because he saw something. So now I want you, but I want you to hear about the stories that are told in our about our uh, in our government, but in our churches, with our coaches, with each other. That's adding to chaos and robbing us of peace, robbing us of joy. And this is why I would say this: Who told you that? Because every voice has an author. And we got to think of it like this. Words are seed. And you can recognize the author or the, where the origin of that word came from based on its root. Did it produce fear? Because God didn't give you a, a breath, a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. So when you hear a word and it produces fear, it produces tightness, it produces all of these things, and we're going to get to where we're going to trust in, you're saying, Pastor Nate, are you saying that if things are coming bad that I shouldn't have? Are you saying that my bunker is, n- is not from the Lord? Because I'm, I'm going to have to oppose you there. And not only oppose you, I'm going to do it in love. But Because, I mean, we're fellow Christians, but I'm, I'm pretty much thinking you're teaching heresy. Well, I'm going to tell you this. If you're trusting in your bunker to save you, you're, you're going to be at a loss. The source of everything, we'll look at this here in a moment. But whether it would Elijah, he, he was, uh, went to a brook. How did he go to the brook? Why did he go to the brook? Somebody tell me. Because the word of the Lord came to him and said, go to this brook and I'll have a raven feed you. That doesn't sound real practical. Let me see if ravens feed. Is there any account of a raven feeding? A... So what, guess what he did? He, he listened to the word of the Lord. And, 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 and the word of the Lord at that time was there's going to be no rain in the land. So how is there going to be a brook? I mean, how is there going to be a brook? But guess what he did? He went to that, and when the brook dried up after the raven fed him, guess what came to him again? A whole truckload of bread. No, the word of the Lord. And in that word of the Lord was go to this, this is in Kings, okay? In this word of the Lord was go to this place, Zarephath, there's you'll find a widow there, and and I've ordered her to feed you. So he goes there, and she's gathering some sticks, and she's going to bake the last little piece and die. A little oil and a little meal, and I'm going to bake this cake, and I'm going to die. And instead, according to the word of the Lord, her family, her and her son, and the man of God, a child of God. Sometimes we put the man of God. The saved one. The righteous one, the one that believed and trusted on the word of the Lord, trusted on Christ, that was where his salvation came from, from the word, from the word of the Lord. But when there's too many other words, sometimes it's hard to hear his word, isn't it? When there's too many other words, it's hard to hear his word. We know the story uh, not too long after that about him wanting to kill himself. You remember this? So he got, let's just go back to, he got sustained there according to the word of the Lord. But then he came and said, it's going to rain, right? And he called down rain, he called down fire. And and here's, Jezebel says, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to, and so all this fear begins to grip him. 
And, and now, instead of being this strong man of God, he's this hiding in a cave. Wow. And I got the out of order calling down fire and all that. But, but here, here, he's hiding in a cave. Why? Because he's hearing another voice louder than the Lord's voice. But this is the man of God. This is the prophet. This is the strong one. Let me tell you, you're no strong. You're not strong when you don't have God's word. His church is not strong when they don't have God's word. They're not strong and they have nothing to stand for. Instead, they're in retreat and they're idle and they're in neutral. And it's easy to move something in neutral. And we're sure not in drive. But we're being pulled the opposite way. Now, play this video. I want you to see how this is the kind of stuff we're, we're hearing. I, I know Sandlot in church, right? This is a break Quiet. so you guys can listen longer. Are you trying to wake it up? It just went to bed. What just went to bed? Shh. The beast. The beast. The beast. Turn that up. Oh, yeah. Shh. Shh. Now, quiet. Taking it all in. The legend of the beast goes back a long time. For any of us could even pick up a baseball. Back to a place called Myrtle's Acres. It all started about 20 years ago when thieves kept stealing junk from Myrtle's Acres junkyard. So Mr. Myrtle, the guy that used to own the place, got him a new pup from the dog pound. He fed him whole size of beef He turned the pup loose in the junkyard. And the pup was grateful. that ever lived. A true killing machine. But after a while, the cops started getting phone calls from people reporting all the missing thieves. <laughs> the ones the beast had killed. It added up to about 120, 173 guys. It's true. It's true. They never found a single body, not one. Some people say they all got away, but we all know what really happened. The beast ate them. He ate them bone and all. The beast was too good at his guard dog job, so the police said he had to be retired. My grandpa, Squigman Paladores, was police chief back then. When he ordered Mr. Myrtle to turn his backyard into a fortress and chain up the beast and put him under the house where he could never get out to eat children and stuff. And that's where he's been for 20 years. And that's where he'll be for the rest of his life. Because when Mr. Myrtle asked the cops how long he had to keep the beast chained up like a slave, he said until forever. 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 120 to 173 guys. It's true. Nuh-uh, nuh-uh. Y'all are just making that stuff up to scare me. You don't believe me? Stick your head out that window. It's down there. Trust, your, trust what I, a puff of smoke. And you know, then Hercules, at the end of the movie, he's wearing the shirt and he's, why didn't you just come knock on the door? Why didn't you just come ask for? And, and so th th this, this idea that there's so many things out there right now, the goal is, is not just to cause confusion, but to cause division. If we were to go to war right now, the sentiment for our military as being one that you can trust, even within the military, trusting their leaders, it's not strong. Well, if there's not trust then you know what everyone's going to be allowed uh, rely on? If you don't trust, if you don't trust the person next to you, 
What are, who are you going to rely on? Somebody tell me. Yourself. Well, how does the enemy work? He looks, he goes about seeking whom he can devour. And the way he does that, he's going to look to try to find somebody that's isolated. Can I tell you, in a nation where there's a thousand opinions, where we're more divided around a word than we are united around a word, even in the church, even in the church, well, do you believe in this? Well, I believe, you know, once saved, always saved. You know, I don't believe in that. I believe that there should be, you know, and so, yeah, I don't believe in that either. Well, I believe in that. Like, I'm over here celebrating the baby that's born. Yeah, I know that they're born. We're like, we celebrate a baby being born. But if someone comes to Christ on the streets, is there no celebration to that anymore? Because they're not, like, growing up into, like, mature believers. Like, I'm glad we didn't treat your, you know, gender reveal like that. Your gender reveal, we're having a pink. We're having a blue. We're having both blue and pink. Yay! Oh, man, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's yet. I mean, I wouldn't be so quick to say that you're having a baby. I mean, what if... Why don't people post that instead of saying congratulations? Because I had an experience once where I lost a child, so I wouldn't post that. I had an experience once that way. They just said that because they were self-concerned and, and scared. you scared the hell out of them. That's the only reason they prayed that prayer. So we're pessimistic instead of, instead of celebrating over a newborn babe, desiring the sincere milk of the word to grow thereby, instead of taking that... We're going to, so we're divided on that, but we're divided over here about what makes righteous and what makes this and what makes this, and we're more divided than we are united around the word. In this country, we're more divided around a government than we are united around a government. And no, Biden, President Joe Biden did not come to my house and say, can you preach on this today and get us united around our government? This is an inside job. That's, what, that's how he works. It's an inside job. The Bible tells us that one day we're going to stand and look at Lucifer, and we're going to go, it was that? It was, it was that that caused all of this? Yeah, because the way, he, the way he does that is that he's an accuser of the brethren. He's an accuser. And you know one of the number one ways, so put yourself in a courtroom, and I, I'm going to stand in the place of judge here at the mo- uh, in, for a moment. He keeps running his mouth, and you know, all of a sudden, somebody says, or the, the excuse me, I'm not going to put myself in the place of judge, I, the opposite attorney, the brethren, okay? So Satan's accusing Ben, okay? Uh, Satan's accusing Ben. Actually, Austin and Ben, come on up here, because i got two, two examples for you guys to look at this morning. <clears throat> so Ben's on trial. You're going to be the devil, okay? We'll switch up roles here in a moment. So... <laughs> Ben's on trial, you're the devil, and you start making accusations. Go ahead. But I'm the Holy Spirit, okay? I'm not the judge. I'm the Holy Spirit, okay? Go ahead. Make some accusations. Throw them at him. You, you know, you did it. Keep going. Make up a story. That one time. Speculation. Speculation. Then here's what the Lord does. Yeah, he, somebody objects and objects to speculation. This is how the enemy works. Speculation. And he, gets, he paints a picture to where what's happening is to all the jury out here, there's a story being painted to you, but it's not based on truth. It's based on it looked like that. So in a dark alley, there was a black jacket, a black coat, and da 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 But it wasn't him in the black jacket. It doesn't matter if there's a black jacket. Were you wearing a black jacket? I was wearing a black jacket. And in that night, da 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 Somebody has to stand up and say, speculation, stop, objection, objection, speculation. I over, you know, overruled or like dismissed that. I are in a motion to dismiss that from the notes or from your, your record. It needs to happen. Speculation. There's so much speculation right now. You know what we need to go back to? The authority of this. That's it. The authority of this. Because the child of God is to be led by the Spirit of God. So in a moment, you're going to see this. Um, 
I have faith over here. And then I have a doctor's report. I have an experience. I have my friend's experience. I have a past. Anything. A symptom. So uh, this is faith or a promise from the Lord. And uh, the promise, let's just talk about healing for a moment. Okay? Healing tells me that I can, I'm healed by his stripes. So go ahead and take me somewhere. Where do you want to lead me? Pull me up for, out of the pit. Pull me up out of the pit. You're going to grab onto me. Pull me up out of the pit. Lead me somewhere. Okay? Where are we going? Just to go off the stage. Okay? No problem. Is that easy? When you go with, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay? I want to go with you, though. Okay. Okay. Because I'm, I, I love, thank you, Lord. I believe that. Yeah. Did you purchase I mean, every time I take, I receive the communion, the body and the blood, and I declare his death and life until he comes. Yeah, thank you, Lord. So I, get, I grab a hold of that promise. Thank you, Lord. PhD says this. This is unbelief. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you. So unbelief says this. So, yeah, take me to healing. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I have faith. All I need is a size. I got faith the size of a mustard seed. All I need, take me there. Yes, heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Take me there. Yes, and I have experience. And where am I going? Why? Because of my unbelief. Where does unbelief come from? It's just, it's just a different word, that a doctor's word that undid this word. Can I tell you there's a lot more than just that word? There's a lot. We got unbelief chained up. We're like chained up like over here and over here and over here. And we have one word. And we wonder why we're not. But we only need this much word. The size of a mustard seed word to say to that mountain. But you won't believe that mountain because that can a mountain really be moved? I mean, a mountain. He probably wasn't meaning that. He's probably meaning this. But if you hear the Lord say it, right? If you hear the Lord say it, then you can believe it. You don't believe it because you didn't hear the Lord say it. But you're in this place of just like confusion, opposition. I don't believe. Matter of fact, I don't believe anymore because of what I see. Because of what I heard. Because of my experience of life. And we've moved away from the message of the gospel. You go sit down. Thank you. We moved away from the message of the gospel. We're going to get in this in the weeks to come. But somehow the gospel has turned into some eternal destination message. Instead of the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, you can write this down, Luke chapter 4, and you can go look at this. Luke 4, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news. The good news is more than an eternal destination. It talks about recovery of sight to the blind. It talks about healing to a broken heart. It talks about a year of jubilee where God could come through and erase some things and restore some things and increase some things. Yeah, the message of the gospel is Good news. But my experience has moved it from good news to just some eternal destination that I can't see. So one day in the sweet by and by, well, I hope it's true. And because it's just a hope it's true, and I have all these other words, all this other chaos, I'm not about the one thing, which is God's will, that all men would be saved and come to the knowledge of him, because I'm not even convinced at the moment that it's true. I think mostly hope kind of 98, 9.99% it's probably mostly true. So I'm going to kind of give most of my effort kind of about to lay hold of that which Christ has laid hold of me for. Because i got a lot of other things I'd like to lay hold of. Can I tell you words matter? All of this is about words. The war is about words. All of what we're talking about, who told you that? From the very beginning. The war is about words. And so when we're, we're put before us so many words, scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, yeah, I like that one. Good, because the algorithm is, knows which ones you like, and they're going to make sure and give you some more that you like. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Or that perked your interest or your fear. So whatever you're willing to listen to, whatever you're willing to listen to. And so we're just talking about more words, more words, 
more words. Actually, John was here this last week. Uh, and, you know, he ministered on Sunday morning, this last Sunday. Well, we had our board meeting. He said this, and I thought it was really interesting. He said, I wonder um, what would happen in the body of Christ if uh, no believer listened to any other voice other than the voice that was in the house that God had called them to. What would happen? How would it be mobilized? How would it be advanced? How would it be? How much peace? How much unity? What would happen if there wasn't too many words? Have you ever been there? Like you just another word, another word, another word, another word. We, there's no shortage of words. There's no shortage of good teaching. But every word that's out there is not for you. It's not for me. Go left, go right, go right, go left. Well, that depends on where you are. Right is the right move if that's where you're called. But if you're not called there, right could be the wrong move and you're supposed to go left or you're supposed to stop and your right could take you. Boom. What would it look like to listen to the place that God had set you to trust the Lord and actually trust that? He, he, he brought that. I was like, whoa, that's, that's interesting you say that because it seems like more than ever before, the Lord's even getting more to, to, to us and talking to us about it. It matters who you're listening to and getting us back to our fathers of faith. Because there's a lot of great, dare I say, clever teaching. But let's just go back to the word. Let's just, let's, 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 let this be final authority. Okay? All right. So it's 1119. And we have made it through one page of 10. And I'm not even playing. Let's go here. Let's go to, um, we're going to talk about a story that is in three of the Gospels. Okay? And it's a story about the young man that had a demon that couldn't be cast out. That story is in three of the Gospels. Somebody say three. three. Let every word be confirmed in the mouth of two or three. So this is doctrine word right here. Three Three places this story is told, okay? Each one of the stories has pieces that the other one didn't complete. But if you were to put it together, like one passage is two verses. Another one, it's like eight. The another one, it's maybe six, okay? And this is where you hear that portion of, well, let's just read it. Let's just read it. Let's go to uh, Matthew. Uh, let's Actually, let's start in Mark chapter 9, verse 14. It says this, uh, it says, when they returned to the other disciples, so this is their, they, the Peter, James, and John, and Jesus are up on a mountain of transfiguration, or the Mount of Transfiguration. So they see God in all of his glory, right? So this is what's going on, and the disciples, or some disciples, are still back over here, all right? It's back over here, and they're back in a, with a demon boy, and that, back with the crowds. Everybody else is up in the glory, Peter, James, and John, and Jesus. Jesus comes back to the disciples, and there's a skirmish. When they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd gathered around them, and the, scar the scribes were arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were filled with awe and ran to greet him. He says, what are you all disputing about, Jesus said. Some in the crowds replied, teacher, I brought you, someone in the, the, the father said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a spirit that makes him mute. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him into the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. Quite a sight to see. Kind of scary, right? So the, obviously, the disciples tried to cast this demon out, and there was a lot of chaos and commotion that was going on, and it gathered a crowd, so much so. And he said, I asked you, verse, uh, the latter part of verse 18, I asked your disciples to drive it out, but they were unable. They weren't able to. Oh, unbelieving generation, Jesus says. How long must I remain with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought, brought him the boy, and seeing Jesus, the spirit immediately did the same thing. Began to throw himself on the ground, convulsion, rolling around, foaming at the mouth. <sighs> okay? Big show, a big show, a big scene. Okay? And, he, and so uh, they brought him to him, and uh, then Jesus is like, uh, so John, how long has uh, Bobby been like this? 
I mean, he just kind of just ignores the, the, the chaos. He's like, well, we're not going to enter this conversation right here. We're not going to enter the conversation of the unbelief and all of the chaos that's trying to draw my attention. Well, hey, Johnny, uh, how long has your boy Bobby been like this? Can you just see this turning? Turn it's kind of like drawn in the sand. Jesus acknowledging what he's supposed to acknowledge, not acknowledging some, again, how many things are we allowing in or putting before our eyes that have no business and the Lord never ordained or never, never, never authorized and we're putting it before us and we're wondering why we can't cast out the demon. We're wondering why we can't trust God in something because I've seen this and I see this and I see this and I see this and so I can't trust God in all of what I, because of all that I've seen. And he says, you unbelieving generation. So the, the scold here is not how little their faith was. Jesus didn't say, uh, or excuse me, he said unbelieving, unbelieving. He didn't say, you generation, you don't have enough faith. He said, you that aren't holding to what you believe. There's a difference. You who are not holding to what you believe because of what you've seen. You who are not holding to, because you got this big bill, you're not holding to that I'll provide for you and that the lilies of the valley are clothed. They're here today and gone tomorrow. How much more are you than they? Don't you believe that? Well, I did believe that, but look how big this is. You unbelieving, you who don't, how long must I wait with you? He says this, and then he goes, um, uh, how long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him to the boy, verse 20. The spirit immediately threw um, himself in the convulsion, fold to the ground, uh, verse 21. So a, a, Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like that? From childhood, he said, often he throws himself into the fire or into water, trying to kill him. But if you could, isn't this amazing? So I, I, I was convinced. The dad was convinced that the disciples could do something because of all that he heard. But now, because of what he's seen, He's not convinced anymore. And even to Jesus himself, he said, if you can, do anything. You know what Jesus said? If I can. If I can. We're praying to Jesus, like, Jesus, if you can make a way when there is no way. If you can, if you could, if you could just maybe, if you could, if I can. If I can. Isn't that what he said? If I can. Jesus echoed, all things are possible to those who believe. Immediately, the boy's father cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw the crowd uh, had come running, he rebuked the unclean spirit, deaf and mute spirit, and he said, I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. After the shrieking and convulsing him violently, the spirit came out. The boy became like a corpse so that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet, and he stood up. Wow. Isn't that awesome? It's, that's, that's amazing. <clears throat> I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 17. And then we'll go, or no, let's finish, let's finish the Mark 28 through 29. Really, this would have been after the Matthew 17. After Jesus had gone out of the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not drive this demon out? Why could we not drive it out? And Jesus answered, this kind comes not out except for by prayer and by fasting. Okay, you've heard that? So um, let's go to Matthew chapter 17, 19 through 20. It says, afterwards, the disciples came to Jesus. Again, we, the whole story. It says, afterwards, the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, how come we couldn't cast it out? The exact same story. Here's what he said. Jesus said, because of, your, because of your unbelief. For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, be moved from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So how much faith did they need? Just that much. Why didn't they have that much? Because of unbelief. What caused the unbelief? What they saw. What they heard. The shrieking, the convulsing, the, the chaos, the, oh my gosh, he's going to get him. He's going to kill him again. He's going to throw him in the fire, I thought. And they moved from what they believed to unbelief because of what they saw. And so Jesus says, he gives the answer. He said, all you need is a little bit of faith. If a demon doesn't come out in the name of Jesus, you better run. Yeah. If, 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 if a demon doesn't bow to the name of Jesus, <laughs> you got no hope. But it, will. it will every time. 
It's not your prayer and fasting that removes the demon. It's your prayer and fasting that removes your unbelief. And you know what we haven't done as a church and as a house? We haven't been praying like we need to. Again, we're talking about getting our house in order. We haven't been praying like we need to. And there was a message last week that was the exact thing about praying. It's a good intentions with no action doesn't produce anything. We haven't been praying and we sure haven't been fasting like we need to. Now, fasting is not the Daniel fast. You know where you can make beans taste like a ribeye steak? You know, the purpose of fasting is to, to deny your flesh the right to call the shot. To deny your flesh the right to call the shot so that your senses are no longer directing your steps, your decisions, but instead your spirit. So what's to happen is in a time of prayer and fasting, and you, if you look at um, Matthew chapter 6, it says when you give, when you pray, when you fast, okay, not in that order, giving is the last one, when you pray, when you fast, when you give, those are, those are disciplines that should be in every believer's life. These are basic. He didn't say if you give, if you fast, if you pray. He said when you do these things, here's how, when you do this, when you do this. And we are so given to what we like and what we... I'll have a double cheeseburger, um, ketchup, no mustard, no pickles, and no onions today. Oh, good, because that's the only way you're going to eat it. Yeah, I don't do that, anything else. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I'll have my porridge, just, no, nope, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Anybody ever read that nursery rhyme? Yeah. That's how we are, where we want it just our way, and we're so set up to, to, to padding our lives that, we, that this is telling us everything to do. This is telling us everything to do. This is telling us everything to do instead of this. We have streams that are going in here and going in here and going in here. But that still small voice? Have we, have we got quiet? Have we denied all the other ones long enough to make this voice amplified? Because there's some decisions regarding your children, regarding your business, regarding a lot of things that only come from here. Because what God authorizes, he will sustain. What's not authorized or what is unauthorized, he has no business a part of. It's Ishmael. So going back to this, I wanted to close with this. And it's a passage. And it's a passage that Paul tells Timothy, a young pastor, who's dealing with uh, just what you would say persecution. And in, this, in the world right now, there's just plenty of persecution against truth. Is there not? Okay. So I want to I want to go here this morning, and I'm gonna we're gonna just read a, a passage. Because how many of you know our trust needs to be in the Lord? Okay. Thank you, Lord. So we're gonna start in Second Timothy. So if you have your Bibles, we're gonna just do some some Bible reading. Okay. Second Timothy. And this is, uh, this is the second letter from Paul to Timothy. Timothy's uh, discouraged because of the persecution in the church. Christians are being burned. Again, this is maybe uh, just a little history uh, lesson that in the Roman Empire, you would have uh, been punished by your crime. So the, the Christians uh, were, have said to have burned down Rome, which was actually not the Christians. It was the uh, emperor, or, and he, they actually burned it down because he wanted to rebuild something. The council said no, and he wanted, to, he wanted to, to build it anyway, so he said, I'll just burn it down. Well, they would have had him removed, and it, there would have been this big revolt, and so he blamed it on the Christians who said, hey, you'll be baptized with fire. They're, they're, they're fire-breathing Christians, right? And so these Christians are being burned at the stake, not for their faith, but for their crime of burning down Rome. This is what's going on. And so, guess what? Timothy is at Ephesus, right? Right, right there. He's in the crosshair, so to speak, a lead pastor uh, in a, a major city, a major church. And people, once this church was growing in 1 Timothy and just flourishing, now the church is shrinking because there's great persecution, whether John died, whether that one got burned by fire, whether that one's in hiding. And this other one says, man, I, would, I, I got your back. I'm a, I love you, but I'm gone. Because I didn't sign up for this. And so Timothy's like freaked out. What do I do? What do I do here? And there's this word of encouragement from 
he, he wrote, writes to Paul in the, to, go ahead and pull them down a little bit because I'm not close. Because there's a, about 40 verses we're going to read. And so they pulled the, uh, the uh, Timothy writes to Paul in prison and says, encourage me. Encourage me. And so that's that letter. It comes back as a word, really, I'm about to quit. I'm ready to be done. And Paul writes to Timothy a letter of encouragement and gives him some direction, what to do, what not to do. And um, he talks about the Lord's approved workmen. That's a, my little heading in there, verse 14, 2 Timothy 2, 14. Go ahead and pull their volume down a little bit. It says, remind the believers of these things. So Paul tells Timothy to remind the believers of something. He doesn't tell them to remind them of how to freeze dry food when you go to the wilderness. He doesn't tell them about any of that kind of stuff of how to preserve their life. He talks to them about too many words. And Paul says, I want you to remind the church about how there's too many words and the foundation that they're standing on is shaken because they've allowed too many words to build their life on instead of the word of God. Listen to this. And this is what he said. So when I was reading this, I felt like the Lord said, read it to you. Read this to you. And I'm going to read it right here. Remind the believers of these things. Charge them before God. Avoid quarreling over words. It is of no value. Which, in my, in my verse, let me read it with you right here. Warn them before, I'm going to read it here because I don't know if you'll keep up as fast as me here. And I don't want to take too long. Remind, me, remind the believers of these things. Charge them before God to avoid quarreling over words, which, success, which succeeds only in leading the listeners to ruin. Or only ruins those who listen. Make every effort to present yourself approved to God as an unashamed workman who accurately handles the word of God. How many of you know that that means I need to tend to this? He says, verse 16, but avoid. Somebody say avoid. Didn't we read this twice now? Avoid quarreling over words. Now he said, avoid irreverent, empty, fruitless, idle chatter, which only leads to more what? Ungodliness. That sounds like unbelief. No longer looking like the Lord. This is what he says that happens with these words. And talk of such men will spread like gangrene. Have you, have you heard about this? Have you heard about this? Have you heard about this? You know why? This is why these videos are so popular, because they spread. And the more views you get, the more money you make. So, you know, all they're trying to do is entice something that's enticing. Something that's enticing, because if it spreads, they make dollars. It's true. And here Jesus is telling us this through Paul. He said, avoid a reverent, empty chatter, fruitless, idle, no action. Again, what are you going to do? I don't believe in the government. What action do you have? I don't believe the government's good. Okay, good. What, what, what action do you have to make a change? Well, I don't know. I thought I just would do this. Irreverent. Idle. It's, that's all it's leading to. And you know what it is? It's, it's, the Bible says that the idle hand is brother to the destroyer. The enemy's in the camp with these idle words. And you won't be able to put your finger on it because it's just about, mm, I don't know, something. But it's not bad. No, it's not bad. It's just distracting. It's not bad. It's just distracting. So if it's just distracting, is it bad? Oh, because he said avoid it. So is it bad or is it not bad? Avoid it. Avoid quarreling over words, which succeed only to leading listeners to ruin. Avoid irreverent and empty chatter, which only leads to more ungodliness. And talk of such men will spread that guaranteeing. Among them are, I don't know how to say this word, him, hymnius and philetus. You know, we don't use names in the church anymore. You know, like if I was to say Justin, uh, Justin and April Burrow, they've been uh, quarreling quite a bit lately, and what they're saying, I, but here he does, doesn't he? I think, we, I think it would be do a little bit better sometimes if we went back to some of the Bible, where it's like, hey, Justin, you need to shut up. And there's some irreverent and idle talk that needs to shut up. 
because it's leading people astray and only to ruin, and it spreads like gangrene. Among them are Highness and Philetus, who have de- deviated from the truth. How? Intentionally? No. Because it looked like this, and it looked like that, and it looked like this, and it looked like that. Does anybody try to go and choose things that aren't? No. Here's what This is right here. This is what we're about right here. Right here. This is why we gather here. Right here. This is it. Paul says, the only reason I'm even saying this and bringing correction, he goes on to say this, is because I want people to hear the truth in love. I want them to hear and have their lives changed. I want the message of the gospel to go forth. Anything else, it, all it is is a diversion, and it will stop the move of God. It'll move a move of God to idol. It'll distract, it'll destroy, it'll pull, it'll, it says it'll spread like cancer or like gangrene. They say, uh, they say that the resurrection had already occurred. Well, are, are we, are we going to talk about tribulation here? Are we in the tribulation? Is it post-trib, mid-trib, all these kinds of stuff? I don't know. It's pan-trib. It's all going to pan out. But I do know Jesus Christ came and paid a price for my sin. It's not by my works, it's by his, and I have no room to boast. And that's a message I have to carry. I've been commissioned to carry. Preach the gospel, the good news. Preach Jesus. Somebody tell me about Jesus instead of about some other thing right now. Somebody tell me about Jesus instead of about another UFO or something else. Somebody tell me about Jesus. Somebody tell somebody about Jesus other than the weather that's being manipulated and Tell me about Jesus more than some chem streams or whatever the heck that is. True or not true, it's idle. And all it does is it robs people from their post. What they're called to do, what you and I are called to do, and that's to preach the message of Christ. When you're afraid, can you give? No. When you're afraid, you get this white knuckle ride, and that's with everything. You handle, you hurt your kids, you hurt your wife, you hurt when you're afraid. You can't demonstrate love when you're afraid. When your enemy hurts me or you, when he hurts, why can you not love? Because of fear. I'm afraid that what they're going to do is going to cause my demise. I'm gonna co- it's going to hurt me. It's going to hurt me instead of just trusting the Lord. I, I don't have to count it because God's counting. The Lord's my redeemer. The Lord's my... Thank you, Lord goes on to say this. It says, uh, so that the resurrection has already occurred, they undermine the faith of some. Words undermine the faith of some. Did you know I could have a God talk to somebody that might be uh, atheist? And I could have an argument with them, although it would be just pointless, and the Bible tells me not to, but my faith wouldn't be moved because I know the scripture. In other words, I wouldn't eat some of the things that they're feeding because I'm grown. But there's other people that are just two and three and four and five and six. And as long as you just make it look like candy, and it's actually robbing their faith. This happened a, a, a while ago where there was a message brought about you better know what you believe. You better know what you believe. You better know what you believe. And in, right before that meeting, this is about two years ago on a Wednesday night. And so you don't maybe understand this, but as a pastor, okay, I'm up, in, up here counseling with somebody that's afraid of losing their salvation. Afraid that they're losing their salvation. I want to please God. Fear, gripped with fear. And I remember having that same thought when I was in sixth grade. That I was losing, that I, that I might not make my salvation. I might not. And I just wanted to so bad. And I just told this young lady. I said, just the fact that you don't want to is declaration enough that you want Jesus. And so I got to t- and encourage her with that. And, well, I don't know about this, and I don't know about this, and I don't know all of the gospel. I don't know all of it. You don't have to. Do you believe in your heart that you need a Savior? Yeah, I know I do. Okay, who's that Savior? Well, Jesus. So you believe in your heart, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Do you understand it? I don't understand, but I know that's right. Then you're saved. And a message came forth that night about you better know what you believe and you need need to know where it's found and you need to know this and you need to know. And literally a hush over the crowd of like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even, I don't know. And I could hear in my heart, get up 
and just silence that noise. It wasn't in unintentional. It wasn't intentional. But it, what it was doing, it was very much producing an unease in the crowd. And I said, hey, all you got to do is do what you know to do, and the rest, God will take care of it. Do what you know to do. Just do what you know to do. Like, otherwise, we're trying to figure it out. Can I just tell you, just do what you know. Just do what this, you see here. The Lord will lead you. Just, it's simple. It can just, it's just simple. He, he, he's easy. His burden is easy. His yoke is like, just do what you see. Lord, I, my, just pray a prayer like this. Lord, my heart is to please you. If there's anything that I'm, just show me. And just, that's simple. But it says that actually there's sometimes words that can, that can cause people's faith to be hindered. Idle words, advanced knowledge words. Advanced knowledge words, right here. Is faith from here? Where's faith from? Right here. So why am I feeding on all of this and, and appealing to your reason and said I should be only going to this and, and here? When our, our God talk should be this, not this. Otherwise, we, we have, have the opportunity to actually undermine faith. That was verse 18. They actually undermine faith. Verse 23 says, But reject foolish and ignorant speculation, for you know that it breeds quarreling. So here's, here's a good thing to stay away from, quarreling. Well, do you believe that in the Nephilim? Well, yeah, the Bible talks about Nephilim. Well, but what about this and this? Well, I don't, I don't know about that. Well, it says this. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments. Well, that's not. That's in the Bible. Yeah, and you know what? This Bible is written, the whole thing is written about God finding a man in Abraham that he could bring his plan with because he would lay down his will. What we know about the Nephilim and all of creation before then is like eight chapters in this whole book. It's just enough to mention. I don't know about it. Do you? Nope. But I know that this is the inspired, infallible, inerrant word of God. And that, that's faith. Well, are you not going to? Well, let's keep going here. So this is important. Avoid irreverent, empty chatter. Oh, excuse me, verse 23. But reject foolish and ignorant speculation, for you know that it breeds quarreling. And a servant of the Lord must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach and forbearing. Have you ever been there? Like where you actually got in an argument with somebody? Am I the only one? No. You got in an argument about what you believe? Do you ever leave there going, ah, I shouldn't have done that? Yes. All of us have been here. This word is to, to all of us, okay? When you and I get on something about this or that, or everyone has their, their touch points. You might be Trump. You might be, I don't know, chemtrails. You might be organic. You might be, you know, could be anything, okay? But when there's something that you just want to push and push and push, he says, Instead, you must be kind to everyone, able to teach and forbearing. He must be gentle to reprove those who oppose him. Let me go back here. Must be gentle to prove in hope that God may grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil who has taken them captive by his will. So that, that's the end of that chapter, but the, the letter continues. He says this. But understand this, Timothy, in the last days, there's going to be some terrible times. For men will be lovers of themselves. They'll be lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal. They'll be love, without love of good. They'll be traitorous. They'll be reckless. They'll be conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They're going to have a form of godliness, but they're going to deny its power. Turn away from these. Okay, turn away from these. They are the kind who worm their ways into households and captivate vulnerable women who are weighed down with sins and led astray by various passions, who are always learning but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. They're, they're, they're the ones that come to people that are gullible, is what they're saying. A woman in that place, she's, she's looking, she's hurting. Anything will help. A man will help. Anything will help. He said these, these people turn away from those people. Turn away from, they're, they're after the gullible people. He said, who are always learning but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Just as, Jan, I just think it's interesting, he's using names again. Just as Janus and Jambres who opposed Moses. 
right? So also these men oppose the truth. They are depraved in mind and disqualified from the faith, but they will not advance much further. For just like these two, their folly will be plain to everyone. You, however, okay? So this is, stay away from this. Avoid this. All of this whole passage is, Timothy, avoid this. Tell your people, remind them, avoid this. Stay away from this. Stay away from that. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, here, I'm glad you asked. You, however, have observed my teaching, my conduct, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love, my perseverance, my persecutions, and my sufferings that came upon me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystria. What persecutions that I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. So remember, the Lord rescued me. There's lots of chaos, but remember this, Timothy. The Lord is your rescuer. Remember this, just like we said, the word of the Lord is your provision. Whether it's the direction to go get a, a hook instead of a net and cast that off the dock, and there'll be a coin in that mouth. I'll, you know, how many of you here would have got a net instead of a, a, a fishing line and a hook? To get our, but the Lord said, go take a hook, cast it off the dock, and get that fish. The first one you catch, there'll be a coin in that mouth. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. That's your, he said, the Lord delivered me, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Verse 12, indeed, all whose desire to live godly lives in Christ Jesus, all who desire will be persecuted. While evil men and impostors go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. So they're all going to be, you're all going to be persecuted like Paul. Can I get you ready? But the Lord delivered them out of them all. This is what he said. You remember? Watch this. He said, that's coming. But as for you, continue in the things you've learned and firmly believed. Fortify your belief since you know from what you have learned. Since you, excuse me, since you know from whom you have learned, from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And this is the last, last verse right here. All Scripture is what you do. Focus on the Word. This is what it said. Avoid all this other stuff because you'll be shaken. You won't know what to do. You won't know how to respond. You won't know what to do with the government. You, you'll be in a place of just self-sustaining, self, 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 self. I will have no, no hope, no help, no, I'll, I'll be looking, I'll be looking. He said, but no, you, avoid those things and get this back out because this word, verse 16, is the, let me read it right here. All scripture is God-breathed. It's useful for instruction. I don't know what to do. What do you need? Instruction. Conviction. Ah, I just don't know about that. Conviction, right here. I don't know. I don't care if somebody else says this or somebody else says that. What does the Bible say? And what does the Bible tell you? I, I'm not to make my things and impress them upon you. Like my conviction is not to be pressed upon you. I'm only to preach the word and let the word convict you. That's right. You don't hear me saying, well, I don't drink. Well, I've never had a drink. But if, if, you're, if you drink, it doesn't say it clearly there. But I'm not coming to your fridge and going, did you have a Bud Light? Because you're a sinner. For me, my conviction is, that's my conviction according to what I see in the Word. And your conviction is between you and the Holy Ghost, between you and the Lord. Nobody else can stand as judge. But you're going to have to stand before the Lord for what you know. All Scripture is God-breathed. It's, it's useful for instruction, for conviction, for correction. Anybody ready and love correction? Why? I do. It points me in the right direction. I thank, thank God that we adjust the wheel as we go down the road for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete and fully equipped for every good work. I wanted to close with that this morning. Every good work. As the people of God, we're not to be idle. We're not to be not knowing what to do. In, where there's chaos and confusion and there's all of this thing, it's because somebody wants to get in on the inside the unauthorized to try to get in in this nation. Let me tell you who's getting in in this nation. It's that which is trying to divide this nation. It's not China. It's not Russia that's going to cause the divide. It's here. It's us. It's within this nation that we're divided about all these different things. It's the church not taking the stand that where the he, he promised, if my people will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. Can God heal anything? You bet he can. What does it take? You and I taking a stand and knowing what we're to do instead of filling our eyes and our ears with a bunch of garbage and causing you and I to do nothing. We got to stop 
we got to, and I'm going to say it again, avoid idle words, which hurts people's faith. Avoid idle words and babblings. Avoid it. Run from it. Why? It's just like I started the message. Turn up the audio. You want to turn it up or you want to turn it down? Because right now there's some life and death decisions in the balance. I don't want to hear that anymore. I don't want to hear that again. You know what I want to hear? A still small voice. A trust. I'd like to smile like Stephen. Space shone like glory. In the flames. He had a different word. He had a different reality. Let me say it this way. He had a different belief. What do you believe? Is this true? Is this true? It is true. So let's look for these words more than we're looking for all the other words. And what you'll find is the Lord will lead you and he'll guide you. He'll sustain you. He'll bring you to a brook. He'll bring a raven to you. He'll multiply the meal and the oil. He'll take you to the end of the dock. And where there is no way, he'll make a way. If you and I will just simply hold to this and turn down the volume on the idle stuff that's everywhere. It's not just end time prophecy or, or conspiracy theory. It's hot new Lamborghinis and, and building this this way and it's everything that you like. It's just to distract. You don't want to hear that. Let's, um, Ev, will you come? We're going to give this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to close the service this morning by receiving our tithes and offerings and, um, and then we're going to sing a song while, while we receive our tithes and offerings. And this song is the last song of the service, which is, He reigns, He reigns, He reigns. And I want us to sing that differently today uh, as we close the service that I don't have to be afraid of all the noise. I need to come back and center it on the main thing, and that is that He reigns. I can, I can trust. Why? Because I can ask that question, who told you that? Next time you fear, who told you? Who told you that? The G-O-D or P-H-D? Who told you that? We have a family member that got a report from a doctor recently, um, extended family. They got a report from a doctor recently, and they're like, ah, it just doesn't feel right. So they go into another doctor, and guess what? Two completely opposing reports. One said you need to do this. One said you, I don't know what they're talking about. You're perfectly fine. What? G-O-D, P-H-D. It's crazy how something can come in just from a report. Focus on what he said. Amen? Go ahead. Do you have anything? No? We're going to give this morning. Um, I don't know how you do that. Thank you for giving, all that stuff. Uh, yeah. In person. Beyondchurch.org. Yeah. Uh, thanks. All right. There are offering envelopes on the seat in front of you. You can also give at beyondchurch.org or on our app um, to do that. And um, just as I was sitting there, I just heard um, really strongly this verse. And I would say this is really a foundational verse for our house. But it says this, um, Psalms 92, Mm -hmm. um, we'll read 12 through 15. It says, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree Mm -hmm. and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they will still bear fruit, healthy and green. They will remain. To proclaim, the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And in him, there is no unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord. And I just wanted to encourage us this morning, you know, totally along the lines of what Pastor Nate has said and idle words. And I love that example of all the chatter, all the stuff. But you know what's amazing about chatter, especially nowadays? You have a choice of what you allow. You have a choice of what you allow in your eye gates in your ear gates. Why, why are these things called gates? Because it's access to what goes on in our heart. And what he said, and this is so true with words that come, every word is a seed. And so we have to look and say, what words or what seeds am I allowing in my heart? What seeds am I allowing in my children's heart? And if it's producing fear, if it's producing questions more than it is answers, that is not from the Lord, which means what? That I need to shut that voice off 
And I love what this verse says, planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. So you know what that means? Where God has planted me is the nourishment that I need. Amen. Where God has planted me is the nourishment that I need. And if you look at a tree that's planted, what does it do? Its roots grow down deep. What is it pulling from? It's pulling from where it's planted. We're to pull from where we're planted. And what is that? I'm not saying you can't ever listen to anything else, but I will say this. If I'm feeding more on the outside words of stuff than I am on God's word and the word that's coming forth from the place that God's planted me, it's going to be really noisy. And it's going to be really hard to decipher what the voice of the Lord is. And I also want to say this, when you're coming to the house of the Lord, this is a promise that you can have planted in the house of the Lord, not just for me, but for my three boys. Do you know every time where there's a word going out where God has planted you, whether you're in this seat or not, there is a word for you. It's just whether or not you're getting it because of where you're at. But you know what? It's not just for us adults. This goes to our children. There's words for our children back in their classrooms. And there's words at in our youth services. We are just in there on Wednesday night, and they are getting the word over there. Well, what is it? It's for them to grow and to flourish. And so I just want to encourage you. The Lord's been dealing with me on this. And again, not that you can't listen to other outside stuff, but I want to encourage us to do what we heard this morning and put it into practice. How many of you know we don't grow if we just hear? That's right. If I'm just a hearer, I don't grow like I need to. So what was the word of the Lord this morning? Guard your gates. Watch the words that are going. Can we just all say, this week, I'm going to guard my gates on social media. I'm going to guard my gates on the YouTubes and and the stuff that's going. And I'm just going to stick my nose in this. Put my eyes on this. Put my ears on this. Put my ears on the word of the Lord. And I guarantee you, we will watch this week fear diminish, questions be answered from simply just opening the word of God and shutting out idle words, words that are meant to distract, words that are meant to pull us off and open the word of God. What, Lord, what do you have to say? Shut all the noise off and just get quiet. You know, there's something about just sitting and waiting before him. And this is a good test to see if I'm just so used to stuff having to be on and stuff having to be going and stuff having. What does he say? Be still and know that I am God. What about just sitting with no phone? I'm I'm a worship person, so I have music going all the time. With no music, with no TV, with no distractions. If you have to go sit outside and listen to the birds, it's beautiful weather out. Whatever you got to do to shut everything off and just be still. And what is that going to do? Probably for a lot of us, make our flesh scream. Because we're so used to grabbing, touching, having to have something entertain us. Look, Lord, I'm just looking to you. And I'm just sitting with the word. And I thank you that as I open this up this morning, this evening, this afternoon, wherever you're at, that you're speaking to me. And your words bring life. Your words bring peace. Your words bring direction. Your words bring wisdom. Your words bring healing. Can we do that and put that into practice this morning and all this week? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So who told you that? Ask yourself that. Ask yourself that. That'll be a good thing to just unplug some of these words. Because as much as you don't let things in, right, you're going to have to also pull some things out. As much as you don't let things in, you're also going to have to pull some things out. If you get a bad report, you can't just go like this. I don't hear you. No, 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 no. You can't just go, oh, let's talk about deer hunting. It's still there. It has to be addressed. So you have to take that thought, take authority over that thought and bring it to the obedience of Christ. If it's producing fear, if it's, you got to ask, who told me that? Is that from the Lord? No, I take authority over that thought and I bring that to the obedience of Christ. Lord, you said this. I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. I take a th- every, any, any word or any voice or any spirit that would rise against what Jesus says or the Lord says, I take authority over that and I 
bring you down in the name of Jesus. You're going to have to take some thoughts captive over your family. I have just heard that all of a sudden, just somebody here this morning, you're afraid that your son or your daughter is going to be homosexual, and you're, going to, and you're afraid of that. Take authority over that thought. If it's producing torment or fear, take authority over that thought. You're hearing that, I, I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. You don't have to be afraid of that. You don't have to be afraid of things. My, my, ki- my children's peace, are they're taught of the Lord, and great is their peace. Amen. Declare the word of God. Yeah. Don't be a torment. Take authority over it. Don't turn it on. Take authority over it. Let it be silence and listen to hear. And then pray for authority like we talked about. Pray for authority in your, idol, in your time where you don't, I don't know what, what to do here. Father, I thank you for our principals. I thank you for our coaches. I thank you for our president, our governor. I thank you for whoever the Lord would bring to you. And lift them up and know that in that place, you'll be able to live a quiet and peaceful life. Because you can trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're going to give this morning and then we're going to just uh, worship the song. Father, thank you for this every tithe and offering. Father, we just, this is pause. Lord, thank you for every person here. Every family. We thank you right now for your provision. Your provision that is beyond our hand. Your provision that is beyond our jobs. Your provision that is so much greater than an economy. Your provision that is truly at your word. I thank you for your words directing and reminding us this week concerning everything and every promise that you've spoken about your care and provision for us. Thank you for peace where there's been fear and torment and and the voice of lack. I thank you for provider would be the new word. I have a provider, one who cares for me. More than the birds, I am cared for. More than the birds, I'm cared for. Lord, thank you for that word. Thank you that you are our provider. Thank you that you're not limited in any way. Thank you for increase and peace and rest, freedom of financial torment for every business owner, every mom and dad and son and daughter, every person in this house free from torment in the name of Jesus. We bring our tithes and our offerings to you, and we just declare you are our source, where our help comes from. Give them to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. We'll sing that song. And we don't really have any announcements today. Um, do you have anything? No, other than just our Bible reading. And that is on the um, app the for app? you. And we're in Mark. I think it's Mark 10. Yeah. I don't know. Mark, Mark 8, I was in. So I don't know. I'm, I'm a few chapters behind. But um, we're doing Proverbs and our daily Bible reading. And then also, we want to get everyone... Um, Really, the goal is not to rely on the announcements from the stage for what's happening, Um, but look on the app, look on the website. You can talk to people um, to find out what's going on. We'll we'll be doing our best to inform you um, Mm -hmm. of what's happening and involved in the family and being a part. Amen? God wants you a part. How many of you know we need the connection of each other? Amen. It's important. Don't let the enemy isolate you. Amen. Don't let him isolate you. Yeah, so just be a part of the body. I know we have night of prayer coming up. That's not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday. But just a part of the life of the church and what's going on and being strengthened. Amen. Amen. And I do want to do a little plug for Wednesday nights. If you aren't coming on Wednesday, you're missing. Um, There's good word. Good word coming out. And that's just um, words. Again, words are coming out for your nourishment, for your flourishing. And so just making that commitment to come. And I know I've had three small children before, and I I get all that, the bedtimes and all that stuff. But you know what? When you honor the Lord, he can redeem that back to you. He can redeem sleep. He can do all of that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we're just going to sing uh, the song of he reigns, he reigns. um, And just declare that before we're just ready to go, we're just going to take a few more minutes and... um, I just really believe, you know, sometimes we hear a word um, and we're so used to just quick, 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 quick. And we're so, so self-concerned that I don't really realize that, that you might need the word and, 
and your word didn't come till one hour and you might need a word and your word was already 30 minutes and your word is still not to 105 but but you already got your word and but maybe this word is still coming and and I need to hear this word of uh, of I've, uh, it's just too hard and I just needed to hear somebody tell me you know what just just do it and we just need to hang in there a little bit and just trust the Lord to allow. It's like a prayer line. You ever been in a prayer line? Have you ever been there where, where you come and you're the first couple of people and it's like, man, the band is just getting it and, and the pastor or the, the, they're laying hands and it's just, just fresh. But have you ever been at the end of the line and everybody that was once had their hands like this in the audience has kind of let them go like this? Let's not be those people that we just, the, the, the one at the end gets the same as the one at the beginning. Like they're not just scraping the bottom of the pan to get something, but they get exactly what God wanted them to get. Like we're, we're just too, too quick. We're going to have to go back, you know, even like bringing our kids into, into worship. You know, that's 1980. Our kids following the same Jesus. Our kids seeing mom and dad worship in the church. We, we, just because it's new doesn't mean it's great. Amen. We're going to declare the Lord. He reigns the tonight, not tonight, but this morning.
His name is Jesus, ruler of everything. He reigns over me. He reigns over this house. He reigns over our nation. He reigns over my family. He reigns. It brings peace. It silences noise. It brings, and that's what this whole message was about. Silence the chaos. Turn down all the voices. Declare he reigns. Get quiet. And know that the same one that started a work will bring it to completion. He is faithful. He hasn't left us. He is where our help comes from. Amen. Amen. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, I don't want to close the service without uh, giving you an opportunity to receive Christ. If you're here, anybody here in the house that say, I don't know if I, where if I was to die today, where I'd spend eternity. If that's you, just lift your hand. If you don't know that you're born again and you've never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't see any hands. I'm going to lead a prayer online and I'll just keep going forth. Uh, the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'd be saved. I, just the way that uh, Kyle this morning shared it, he said, you know God loves you and he's got a plan for your life. It really does start by being born again. And so the, how you do that, just like what I said, you just confess him as Lord. Ask him to come into your life to, and to lead your life. You know, so I'll lead you in this prayer. Just say, Father, thank you today for acknowledging me. I need you. I know that. Today, I make a declaration of my faith and my trust in you that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins that he rose again and paid the price for all of my sins I trust you Lord I'll serve you help me to follow you all the days of my life in Jesus name Amen, amen, amen. Well, I'm going to close the service the same way we've done the last three services, and that's go preach Jesus this week. Go preach Jesus because you're at peace. Go preach Jesus because you know him as the provider, as the strength, as your help, because there's less noise, you can give a clear word. Amen, amen. amen. Preach Jesus this week. We're excited to hear testimonies.